The full specs of the PS5 Pro have been leaked, and they look extremely impressive with over three times the performance of the PS5. Not only that, but the PS5 Pro is set to release this year. So here's everything we know in terms of its performance. Oh, and do you guys see that funny cat over there in the background? That's part of our new Kitty Kingdom wallpaper spec that we launched on Tuesday, with 10 handcrafted iconic cat breeds. And today we're launching Paper Cut Peaks by Hanane. Another stunning pack with 10 beautiful designs. Designs that look great on both mobile and desktop. You can find both packs in our app wallpapers for iOS and Android. And now, back to the PS5 Pro spec leaks. First of all, how do we know that this leak is even legit? Well, it was originally posted by leaker Moore's Law is Dead, who got his hands on some official Sony documents that were apparently sent to third-party developers that already had the PS5 Pro dev kits. And these documents seem to showcase the full specs for Project Trinity, the codename for the PS5 Pro. I've mentioned leaker Moore's Law is Dead in our next Gen PSP video. Moore's info then got corroborated by both IGN and Tom Henderson from Insider Gaming, who is by far the most reliable source when it comes to PlayStation leaks. He accurately reported on the PlayStation Portal, the PS5 Slim, the Sony Pulse Elite headset, and the Sony Pulse Explore earbuds many months before their actual release. And now Sony has also started investigating this leak, which adds even more credibility to this entire leak. So now that we know that this leak is extremely likely to be true, what are the actual leaked specs for the PS5 Pro? Well, starting off with the CPU, this seems to be identical to that of the standard PS5, the only exception being a high CPU frequency mode, which boosts the clock speeds to 3.85 GHz from 3.5, which is a fairly modest 10% increase. This doesn't seem anything special, but we need to remember that Sony did something very similar with the PS4 Pro, which used the exact same AMD Jaguar CPU as the PS4, but with faster clock speeds, in that case, by 31%. The real improvement with a PS5 Pro, though, is when it comes to the GPU. The PS5 Pro seems to have a total GPU compute power of 33.5 teraflops compared to 10.28 on the PS5. That is 3.25 times faster, which is a massive increase and an even more substantial GPU improvement than that of the PS4 Pro, which was 2.28 times faster than the PS4, at least when it comes to uh, teraflops. Now, of course, teraflops don't tell us the whole story, which is always far more complex. In fact, Sony is only referring to a 45% faster rendering performance compared to the PS5. Still, even that is a pretty substantial increase, as aside from just the raw performance, we are also getting some other benefits too. For example, the actual ray tracing performance is said to be 2-3 to three times higher than that of the PS5, sometimes even as high as 4 times higher, which is, again, a gigantic improvement over the standard PS5. Plus, we are also getting a new AI accelerator, which I'm assuming would take off the load from the CPU and the GPU when it comes to AI-related tasks. Although at this point, it isn't quite clear as to what these may be. My guess is that it will be up to the developers to actually make use of this AI accelerator. On top of this, we are also getting a custom machine learning architecture, once again pointing at Sony's interest in building support for AI in the PS5 Pro. So if we do start seeing generative AI being used in games for generating artwork or even worlds, then the PS5 Pro might be the first console to already have this hardware accelerated support for it. Now, aside from the CPU and the GPU improvements, it looks like we are also getting some memory upgrades. Now, the amount of memory seems to remain the same at 16 gigabytes, but the bandwidth is increasing to 576 gigabytes per second, up from 448, or by 28%. Personally, I was hoping for some more memory too, but then again, Sony seems to be following in the footsteps of the PS4 Pro, which, just like the PS4, had the same 8 gigabyte of memory, only faster by 23% in that case. Now, these specs look pretty promising, but what I think is by far the biggest surprise is Sony's PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR. Yes, Sony did have checkerboarded rendering on the PS4 Pro, and the PS5 used a dynamic resolution, with some games even utilizing AMD's FSR, but so far, we've never really had a first-party Sony solution that could compete with FSR. Well, PSSR aims to be just this, and from the leaked documentation that Moore's Law showed us, Sony even had an example of how PSSR compares to FSR 2. And at least from this, 
it seemed to be noticeably higher quality. However, Moore did say that this is not necessarily an accurate representation of the final result and that he did intentionally modify some aspects of the Sony documents in order to protect his sources. Now, I'll get into what sort of benefits PSSR would give us in games in just a second, as there are a couple of other improvements worth noting first. For example, the audio is getting some upgrades too. The audio processing unit inside a PS5 Pro is said to be 35% faster. The PS5 already had a pretty impressive 3D audio powered by their existing Tempest engine. Sony's latest headsets, the Pulse Elite and the Pulse Explorer, they do support lossless audio via PlayStation Link, which is Sony's lossless standard for PlayStation. However, they both come with a dongle, as not even the PS5 Slim supports it natively, only the PlayStation Portal does. So my guess here is that PlayStation Link will be built into the PS5 Pro, and that this is essentially a new Tempest engine that makes better use of it than compared to the PlayStation Portal. Other changes include a detachable disc and one terabyte of internal storage, matching those of the PS5 Slim. So what sort of actual performance improvements should you expect to see here if you're coming from a PS5? Well, a lot of the first party titles right now, like God of War Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and many others, they support 40 FPS quality modes if you have a VFR enabled TV. Judging by the 45% faster rendering performance alone, these games should now run at 60 FPS, which is already a pretty substantial upgrade in itself, as this is of course native 4K with ray tracing enabled too. And then, games that currently run at 60 with a dynamic resolution, those will be able to go up to 120 thanks to PSSR. In fact, an even newer leak shows that PSSR is especially targeting 4K 120 and also 8K 60. A 4K 120 is currently doable on the PS5, however, very few games support 120 FPS modes, and the ones that do heavily downgrade the resolution or the graphics to around 1080p for most cases. And if you have an 8K TV right now, you'll finally be able to play PS5 games in 8K, something that was just not possible on the current PS5 despite the AK branding on its box. So if you already have a PS5 like me, should you upgrade to this PS5 Pro, which is set to release by the end of this year? Well, that is a very tricky question. On one hand, it seems like you'll be able to get native 4K 60 with ray tracing, which is a big upgrade from the current 4K 30 slash 40. And you'll also get 4K 120 with PSSR, which is going to be a significant upgrade if you have a VFR TV or monitor. But then, on the other hand, games do need to be updated to take advantage of the PS5 Pro's power in the first place. And if you are to go by how things have gone with the PS5, that may take a very long time. Many months, or even a few years in some cases. And some games may never get a PS5 Pro patch if we are to go by what Rockstar did with Red Dead Redemption 2, which is still running in 1080p 30 on a PS5. But if developers do take full advantage of the PS5 Pro power, and if playing your favorite games at 60fps or even 120 is extremely important for you, then I think that this will be a worthwhile upgrade. Plus, once GTA 6 releases next year, the PS5 Pro will literally be the best place to play it on, as there's not going to be a PC version at launch, and as we all know by now, Microsoft is not going to be releasing an Xbox Series X Pro anytime soon. Instead, they will be releasing something very different. Video about that right here. Of course, do remember that the price for the PS5 Pro will likely be much higher. The PS5 Slim starts from 450, and that's for the discless version. So I think the PS5 Pro will be $600, if not even 650. Let me know in the comments, of course, if you guys have any plans of upgrading. And definitely do subscribe if you have enjoyed this one and you wanna see more PS5 Leaks and Rumors episodes. I'm Daniel, this means Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.